If you're an online business, you probably have considered Patreon as an option. Should you join Patreon and make that part of your monetization strategy? About a year and a half ago, I made a video about why I don't use Patreon. And over the last year and a half, I've actually gotten a lot of responses to that video, a lot of comments. I thought it would be helpful to make a video responding to the comments about Patreon, people asking me for clarity. There's a lot to consider when you think about joining a platform like Patreon to support your creative endeavors online or a marketplace like Udemy or Skillshare to sell your courses. There's lots of different things like this out there and there's reasons why I don't do them and I don't recommend them over the particular model that I follow, which is to have your own platform to use a software that allows you to have the complete control over all of what you're doing with 0% transaction fees and so on. But that's for another video. For this video, I wanna look at Patreon in particular. This was the video that I made. It's called Why I Don't Use Patreon a better recurring revenue model. If we've never met, my name's Lane. I love to help people replace their nine to five income with a thriving online business without hustle, grind, or having to build a large social media following. You can find out more at lanesebring.com slash super simple. Okay, so I'm all about helping people replace their nine to five income. In fact, when I made this video 18 months ago, my business was a six-figure business. It is now a multiple six-figure business and I'm on my way to seven. So I've lived it, I've helped people do it, and I choose not to use Patreon. And so I made this video explaining all that and you can watch the video, it's 12 minutes and 39 seconds. I basically just go into why in a large part, the reason why I don't is because people when they get on Patreon are conditioned to consider it like a tip. Right, they're given a dollar, they're given $3 a month, $5 a month, maybe 10. Some people in the comments pointed out that you can set the tiers at whatever you want. But typically, people who know, people who consider Patreon, they think about it as a small thing that they are contributing to support your art. That is why I say if you are an artist, it might be a really, really good place to go, especially if the type of content that you do are like video essays, where it's not necessarily that you're selling a transformative online course or some kind of product, it's more the work itself has intrinsic value and if people want to continue to see that and maybe get access to that type of thing at an even deeper level, Patreon makes a lot of sense. But for those of us in online business where the point isn't that we are artists, the point is that we are teaching a skill or an experience and doing it in a way that is transformative so that people are paying not just to see the work we're doing and be benefited by it or entertained by it, but they are truly wanting the value from it. They're wanting a transactional value. They, they want the skill that we're teaching. If that's the case, Patreon really isn't best for that. So that was the point of the video. I didn't knock Patreon. I, th I think Patreon's fine. I just think it has its place and it's not in the type of business that I do or in the type of business that I teach. So let's look at a couple of comments or a few comments. Really great perspective, appreciate it. Thanks so much for explaining this. So there are some good ones. This person said, thanks for sharing your thoughts on this. I'm writing courses and creating content and have been pondering my mind on this subject. I think I've decided Patreon doesn't work for me, the same reason of having to commit for tips. May I ask, would you recommend Kajabi for selling one hour consultations or is there something else better for this? Literally, I just wanna set up a Calendly for people to set one hour meetings with me to review their art portfolios and make paint overs to help them improve their art. I want to do this while I'm building my courses. So really great question. There's a couple of things here. First of all, he said, I think I've decided Patreon doesn't work for me for the same reason of having to commit for tips. What he's talking about is I, I mentioned that I don't like anything that obligates me for an extended kind of Per period of time, like in perpetuity. This is why I actually shut down my membership site and instead I do short-term cohort style online courses. So I have normal online courses that are just self-paced digital courses, but I also have live cohort style courses that people can join for a you know six week period of time 
And during that six or eight weeks, I am committed to those people. I'm fully present. And then it's over and they move on. They've gotten the value out of it. I move on. Everybody's happy. What I don't like about a membership site is that the commitment is in perpetuity. And if you're successful, it just continues to grow. Like it just never ends. And so that's why I don't like membership sites in general, although they can be really good for some people. The reason why I think Patreon makes it even worse is the volume that you have to do, the amount of people it takes to make a substantial amount of money when people are basically just looking at it like, I'm not getting much from this, I'm just gonna tip and I'm, and I'm expecting you to commit to more content for me and I'm gonna give you $3 a month in exchange. That is a hamster wheel that I don't wanna be a part of. So his question, would you recommend Kajabi for selling one hour consultations? Of course, Kajabi would be amazing for that. Uh, Kajabi has an incredible one-on-one -on -one coaching product. If, by the way, you wanna join Kajabi, you can use my link, lanesebring.com slash Kajabi. You get th these free, three free bonuses plus a 30 day free trial. So highly recommend that. My link is the best for that. No additional cost to you, you get those bonuses because that is an affiliate link. Wow, fantastic video, awesome. I'm contemplating Patreon, this was a different angle, which I appreciate. Yeah, that's all I'm really trying to do is just give a different angle. So in other words, you don't have enough subscribers to only charge five bucks. You'd rather charge a handful of people, several hundred dollars a person, and that's why you don't use it. Teaching courses are so overrated, overpriced. <laughs> okay, all right, so this is the first kind of negative slam. In other words, you don't have enough subscribers. So the, one of the things I mentioned in the video is I say that the reason the reason why Patreon doesn't work for my channels and the type of content that I make and the type of online business that I teach is that Patreon largely requires a lot of volume. So it's a ton of volume spread out over a lot of people. And so it's a little bit of money spread out over a lot of people and you can make a good living that way. So it has to be, you have to have the volume. So he takes it to say, so in other words, you don't have enough subscribers to only charge five bucks. Uh, you'd rather charge a handful of people several hundred dollars. Yeah, uh, yes, <laughs> that's what I'd rather do. You know why? Because that handful of people are going to benefit in a massively more targeted way and it's gonna benefit them at a much higher level than being everything to all people and having this massive platform and only charging a few bucks. It's just a different model. So let's see how I replied to this guy. Yes, that is my strategy. If it's not for you, Cool, do it a different way. <laughs> so yes, this is something that people often misunderstand when they think about online business because what they're thinking about is really an influencer model. And I'm not an influencer, I'm a thought leader. The difference is that an influencer requires on lots of views, lots of people, and monetizing a lot of different things. A thought leader, relies on the thing that they're teaching is so transformative to a targeted audience that it's not overrated and overpriced to those people. So I'm not asking anything from this Casey Simmonson 2 guy. I don't care who he is or what he wants. I, I don't want anything from him. So it's not really for him. And so to him, yes, one of my courses would be overrated, overpriced because he's not in the market for it. He's not part of my target audience. But to the people who are, it is a massive, massive value proposition. And so that's why I say uh, Patreon isn't for me and he just takes it from a different angle and you know we, uh, we can agree to disagree. This person said, I agree on what you say that Patreon might not be the best option, but you talk about two, three or four dollars per month while on Patreon, you can ask whatever amount you want. You can even ask a thousand dollars per month. So in my opinion, that's not the reason why Patreon is not ideal. The reason that it's not optimized for courses or coaching kind of content, it is confusing for a lot of people and it takes a big fee on my revenue. So the first thing you said is yes, I give the examples of two, three, five dollars per month and I kind of disparage that as a monetization strategy for most people because it's so low. He points out that yes, you can set the tier whatever you want, it can be a thousand dollars a month. However, people are not conditioned largely on Patreon 
to pay anywhere near $1,000 a month, and they expect low-level tiers. So they expect that there is an option that's very low-level and maybe an option that's high-level, knowing that most people take the low-level option. So I still think it's not ideal for people who are trying to target their content at a certain type of people in their niche and monetize it. But he mentions that it's confusing, and I agree, but the big thing is they charge a fee on revenue. Like, the more you make, the more you have to pay in revenue. Now, Kajabi, which I mentioned earlier, is 0% transaction fee. So you pay a single monthly amount, and that's it. You can sell as much as you want, host your entire business on the platform, and you don't have any transaction fees, which is really, really rare. A lot of, lot of platforms, especially all-in-one online business solutions, charge transaction fees. And by the way, I'm talking above and beyond like the standard Stripe credit card fee. That's always going to be there if people use a credit card. But a lot of these platforms charge a transaction fee. They just penalize you for making money on their platform is one way of looking at it. You could say it's not penalizing you. They're just, it's part of the cost of using the service. The fee structure is different at Kajabi where it's one fee and there's no transaction fees, which I prefer. So great points. I still think the average person thinks low monthly contribution when they think Patreon. And yes, the fee structure is not ideal either. So that's how I responded. This person said, perhaps I've misunderstood, but your conclusions seem completely irrelevant to the topic alluded's alternative to Patreon. I can't see how anything of your conclusion, getting revenue by affiliation, has any parallel or relevance to being a creative who creates content. If all you're doing is pursuing affiliate profit, then you're just essentially a type of investor. I have zero interest in spending my life just chasing investment opportunities. I am a creative, a musician and teacher. What would, what would have been nice and actually relevant as a parallel to the topic of alternative to Patreon would have been where and how you host your online courses. So how did I respond to him? I said, thanks for the feedback. I consider myself a business person first, a creative second. We are just different. Perhaps Patreon is a good fit for you. Perhaps it's not. Either way, thanks for watching. As to where I host my courses, I use Kajabi. I have about 250 videos about Kajabi on this channel, and <laughs> I mentioned Kajabi in the original video. But one of the things he talks about here is this idea of being an investor versus a creative, that you, you can't be, like you can't, you have to be one or the other. There's, there's a choice you have to make. And one of the things I love is my buddy, Roberto Blake, he talks about how you don't have to starve as an artist. Roberto Blake, his whole channel is about helping creatives make an, a living off of their art. And so he talks about how there are influencers, there are thought leaders, and there are artists. So earlier I referred to myself as a thought leader and I'm using his buckets to do that because I'm not an influencer. I do not like that model. It works for a lot of people. It is not my thing. It requires way, way too much of just chronically online, growing a large audience, all things that I don't really have an interest in doing and don't really want to have to do the things required to make that happen. So I'm not an influencer. I'm also not an artist. Like this is not, that's, I, I wasn't, I can't be what I'm not. I consider myself to be creative, but I'm not an artist. So what am I? I'm a thought leader. In two different businesses, I have got online, made content, made courses, sold products, sold coaching, teaching my ideas, teaching my approach. First, it was how to preach with confidence and clarity over at Preaching Donkey. And second, it was how to replace your nine to five income without growing a large social media following. That's what I do here on my personal brand at Lane Sebring. So with this person, I think he's right when he says he's misunderstood because I am telling people, if you're a creative, Patreon is probably for you. If you're an artist, Patreon is probably for you. But if you're approaching this like a business, there are better options. And so for him, he just looked at it and said, this isn't for me. And you should have been clear about that. And to him, I would say, well, Adam, I was. <laughs> just go back and watch the video. This person said, kind of stings to get called a mere artist. Oof. Okay, so I said, please no, I meant no disrespect. This would be a dull world without artists and the art they create. So again, I don't script my videos. I work from a loose outline, sometimes not even that. So if I said mere artists, and I think what I meant by that 
was I was saying that if you are not also in business, that's all I meant by that. So mere artist doesn't mean to disparage or limit what artists do or the contribution they make. I was just saying, if you're not an artist who is also a business minded person, then Patreon would probably be really good for you because you could get support for your art. But if you are also a business person who just happens to also be an artist and a creative, there's much better options like Kajabi. One word, networking, as old as human mercantilism, combined with commissioned marketing, nothing new here, only the technology to enable them. Yep. Yeah, because in the video, I talk about how my recurring model, that's funny that I said, yep. Um, my recurring model is not to have a membership site. It's actually to have a recurring revenue. It's actually to have an affiliate product with a recurring revenue model and to use my platform and my business to send people to that business and get commission from it. So you can watch the video if you want to know that. This person said so many words with like a tired face and a tear. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, that's what I said. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> Bro talking about six figure salary to an audience of less than 10,000 uh, 25 comments, L M A O. That means laughing my butt off. Okay. Let's see. What, let's see what I said. Okay. So I will admit with, uh, with Kermo 13, I got, a I got a little snarky on this one. Okay. So here's what I said. I rarely respond to comments like this because I know your intent is to be hurtful at my expense for a cheap laugh. But for some reason, I feel like responding, not for your sake, but for the sake of anyone else who might see this. First, this YouTube channel generates multiple six figures of mostly passive income for me. I've been able to do that with a tiny channel, less than 10,000 subscribers. It's now 11, but basically it was like 9,500 at this time. It's like 11,000 now. Because I have been able to convert targeted viewers into leads and offer them my products and affiliates, all completely automated using Kajabi. So what you see is a video on a channel with less than 10,000 subs and 25 comments and immediately decide to throw shade. What you fail to do is ask any questions or seek to learn anything that might be useful. You should know that my tiny channel that you scoff at allows me to take three to four months off a year while you're asking your boss for a half day on Friday. Carry on. Okay, so that last sentence was probably unnecessary, <laughs> okay? You know where I got that? I'll tell you where I got that. Um, uh, so the creator of MySpace, his name's Tom. Is that his name, Tom? So he sold MySpace, and later on he was on some kind of thing like this, and somebody left a comment and said something like, like responded to his tweet and said, oh, you know, that's funny that you say that, a guy who couldn't even make a social media platform work. And Tom responded, oh, you're talking about the guy who sold MySpace to Yahoo for 750 million while you were asking your boss for a half day on Friday. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. So obviously much bigger slam coming from him than me. I'm, I'm just making 25,000 a month over here on a small channel, which I think is pretty impressive, but I haven't built a social media platform and sold it for 750 million. I haven't done that. <laughs> um, so anyway, yes, it was snarky, but I felt like I see these comments a lot. And if you're not, if you're not a YouTuber, it's hard to like understand the way these comments sometimes hit you just the right time. They hit you in a way that just in all the fields, bro, bro, talking about six figure salary to an audience of less than 10,000. It's just so ignorant. It's like, yes, I'm making multiple six, I'm making 300,000 plus a year off of this. And you're too like narrow minded to even ask a question and say, is there something to this? Is there something I'm missing? It's just throw shade and laugh. Okay, fine. Keep doing that. This person said your response was too aggressive. He had a point. Yeah, maybe. And, and I said, and I had a point. We both made our points. Uh, this person said, I have 300 views per video, 250 people become a client. I'm not a 20 year old uh, so-called guru. If you provide the quality, the views don't actually count. Yeah. This person said, uh, Lane Seabree, I, I agree. Keep doing what you're doing. I also want to learn more. So yes, to both of those people, love that. This person said, so all caps, basically this is a paid promo for Kajabi. No, no paid promo ad for Kajabi. No, 
Nope, not paid at all. It's a video that has an affiliate link provided. I was not paid by Kajabi to make this video. Not sure if you're familiar with affiliate marketing, but it is different than sponsored posts. I am clear about the process and fully disclose that this is an affiliate link in compliance with YouTube terms and the FTC, which is the Federal Trade Commission. If someone uses the link to purchase Kajabi, I get a referral fee from them, but I am not paid to make the post. Again, all that is clear. So there you go. Sometimes people just love to say, oh, so you're doing something you shouldn't be doing? No. This is my livelihood. I've thought this through. So there you have it. I would love to hear from you. Do you use Patreon? Have you considered other options? Maybe you're on Patreon, you're thinking about moving to something else. Let me know in the comments what you decide that you're doing. And if you're looking to jump over to something like Kajabi, I wanna show you how I made a live cohort style online course using Kajabi step-by-step. -step. I made a playlist detailing all of it and the results I got right here. So check it out and I'll see you in that playlist.